Lend us your ears and focus your eyes. Because uh, early on, like I said, he has spent the better part of this afternoon trying to explain to uh, corporate heads this whole story about what the African middle class is all about. He gives a very lucid presentation. So let's make welcome for our keynote speaker tonight. Of course, tonight uh, the theme is African Lions demystifying the African middle class. It makes a lot of sense. Let's put our hands together and welcome the Managing Director, Mr. Agri Oriwo. Makofi Moja, Agri, Mili. No, 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 no. Instructions. Agri, just, no, go, go back, go back. Start from there. Are we ready? Let's welcome Agri. On one, Makofi. Agri. Karibu. Utuambie. In middle class. Ni, ni, ni. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, that's my brother from my... From where? <laughs> you heard. That's my brother from Simenya. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, uh, my fellow uh, CEOs. I have all my bosses here, by the way. I have uh, my CEO, Pan-Africa. David, can you wave? And then I have my CEO, SSA, uh, Clive Little. Clive, can you wave? And then I also have the full choir to support. Ipsos, where are you? <laughs> and all fellow market researchers in the house, can I hear you? I mean, it's very funny because when uh, you talk of us market researchers, we are that very boring lot that never managed to be brand managers, like the ones Bill was pointing out. We never managed to get to those glamorous positions, so we were the bookies, you know, those choppies that you had who remained in school and do very boring things as you enjoy yourself talking about those brands and coming out to become the CEOs in those corner offices. So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't take it for granted. Thank you very much. Getting time to listen to us. Who is the African middle class? It's a very, very interesting thing, and people have been talking about the African middle class for a very, very long time in this part of the world. And at some point, I think we've even decided to ask ourselves whether there is such a thing as a middle class. Uh, DSTV was here, and uh, they're very happy. They're telling you there's a middle class, and you have compact, you can get HD. And, and they are targeting that particular middle class. And we ask ourselves, are they there? Recently, a few years back, somebody came up and published a very interesting article about one gentleman who has three SUVs or three top-of-the-range vehicles parked in his garage. His child goes to uh, uh, James Cambridge Primary School or private school. And it's always funny. I've always asked myself, how come Kenyans love their children going to school around Lovington? Because he has a lot of grief around the office. Because... <laughs> It's funny because the so-called very, very, very high affluent Kenyans take their children to the Rusingas, the Makinis, and the Brebans of this world. And the people from Kawangware who are supposed to be in the lower, lower levels of the society, where do they take their children? To Lovington Primary School. So the kids meet on the way. The ones who live in Lovington walk to Kawangware to school. The ones living in Kangware come to Lavington to school. But those are some of the things we're trying to ask ourselves. Is there such a group as a middle class? Even if I gave you the whole night, guys, your middle class ideas will be, will be as varied as we are in this room. We'll have as many opinions about who the middle class is. That very reason that we were not agreeing on who the middle class is that we could not quantify the middle class, that a lot of people had different ideas about the middle class. And I know you have a lot of ideas. The very idea that we could not agree on who the middle class is, is what took us to the field, into Africa, to find out whether we really have this class that we call the middle class. I'll leave you to answer that question when I finish with my presentation, whether you or your colleague who is sitting next to you is the middle class. 
in our study, there's something that we were able to come up with. We came up with the idea that yes, there could be some myths that we have. There are some beliefs that we have in our head that define the middle class. And those are what will form the basis of our talk today. This study is a very, very big study. I mean, if we start going deeper into this study, you realize that the nuances and everything that I'm trying to talk about can create a whole presentation or two days of presentation. So let's paint a picture of the middle class. We agree on one thing, that for a very long time, the West, the World Bank, and a lot of other places, and other developed economies, have tried to describe the middle class as that person who is earning a certain dollar amount somewhere. And they pegged it and said, perhaps if you're here, like that, those people are saying, if you earn this amount of money, then you're middle class. Our study says you cannot peg the middle class on a certain dollar level, and you'll see why. If I, want to, if I could explain that further, you just take an example of two people earning the same amount of money, but one has no responsibilities, this other one has a lot of responsibility. So 60,000, which is so committed, and 60,000 that is, can be spent drinking single malt whiskeys, which is more attractive to you as a marketer. There are a lot of variations. There are people who are earning 60,000, but then that 60,000 is so totally committed. There are people who are earning 60,000, but they supplement that income. So there, there are a lot of variations here and there. You cannot just take one size fit all. The other thing that I would like to talk about when you're talking about the middle class, if you look back at uh, that dollar issue, you, you, you step further and try to dig deeper. Look at the price of different items. And we've given a good example of beer in Luanda and beer in, in, uh, in Lagos. And you find that perhaps the cost of beer in Luanda could be higher, a liter of beer or a half a liter of beer. In Luanda, Angola is higher than I have a little of beer in, in, in Lagos, Nigeria. Why? Those differentiations are the ones that tell us that you cannot come and peg a dollar as the basis of a certain income level that is the basis of having or counting a person who has or who is in the middle class. If we continue further, you are middle class, we believe, and from our study, if certain things happen to you, you could be having a certain amount of money. And we've said this money is some disposable income, income that can be spent. You can be middle class if you have a certain level of education. You can be middle class if you have, let's say, tertiary education and above. You could be middle class, again, because you are able to keep a job and you have a job and that's what makes you feel like you're middle class because you have one capacity to spend some money. If you continue further, you, you realize that there are some beliefs that we've heard about the middle class. And I want us to demystify those beliefs very, very quickly without making it very boring for you. What are these beliefs? Belief number one, we believe that the middle class are, do, are doing what? What do the middle class do? They have very, very low incomes. Is it true? Do they have low income or do they have good income? <laughs> we believe there is a class that has that kind of income. And in our study, we came up and found out that these particular belief is not really far away from the truth. The truth is there, that there is that class and they have some income and that, that class exists. The other belief, there's that belief that these people live in their own, uh, they are well educated. And as I said, take a look at the middle class in Nairobi and this is more relevant to you. 
who are the middle class or the people who should have been in the middle class? And I give an example. Somebody who has started working in Nairobi as a graduate entry. Most of you are new brand managers or brand executives. What is the entry level salary? Don't reveal your salary. You're not Magufuli. <laughs> but what do you think is the average level entry salary? Do you have such people? Yes. If these people are on a certain amount of money, they earn a certain amount of money, let's assume you are just at work. Which part of town would you live? Nairobi? Would you find a new person living in, uh, let's say, Lovington? Perhaps if in even the suburban quarter in Lovington are a bit pricey for such a person. So this person will be living where? Embakasi? I want us to get ourselves out of that belief. Who lives in South Sea? South sea? What's the rent in South Sea? What is the rent in South Sea? It's about 30,000. 60,000. So how can a person earning 60,000 live in a house for 60,000? <laughs> so, let's just spend some time on this. You are brand managers. You have been sent out to look for the middle class. You go to South B, South C, and you say the middle class live in South B. Are they there? Because if the rent for a house in South B is 60000 you're earning a salary of 70000 as an entry graduate. Are you the middle class? What are you? And unless you come from where I come and you live for the day, that's when you'll pay that kind of salary. <laughs> or you pay. aspiring middle class, somebody said that. Again, let's look at belief number three, that the middle class are found or they, they, they consume, they, they are consumers who don't understand what needs to be consumed. I want to tell you one thing about that, that belief. Let me just read it here. That people who live in the middle class, oh, water. <laughs> that the middle class live in a small household. And uh, you ask yourself, is it true? What is the size of a household of the middle class? Four? The truth is, the truth is, most of us live in very, very... Chuck. The truth is, most of us live in very, very small households. We don't have the number of children that those people who are not educated and who are not in that class have. So it's true that the middle class have an average household of how many? Four, as it's shown. The other belief... that the middle class own cars and their houses. And that is a very strong belief. How many of us here believe that the middle class own houses? There's a question I asked. One of the easiest way of owning a house if you don't have a rich uncle or a super sponsor is very simple. You go to the bank and walk into the bank and ask for a loan or you ask for a mortgage. So, if you're to take the actual number of Kenyans who own mortgages, what is the actual number of Kenyans who own mortgages? It's about 20,000 Kenyans or there are about. About 85% of that are bankers who are allowed
So, do we still believe that middle class own houses? Do we still believe that the middle class own houses? Just look at the figure, uh, the numbers of home ownership in Nairobi. What type of accommodations do the middle class live in? And I would like to take time in that slide, because I asked you, where do these people live? If you drove in Nairobi and went to places like Embakasi village, most of you never believe that the people who live there are the middle class. But ask yourself, where do most of our esteemed Pride of Africa service crew live? They live in Embakasi village, isn't it? Are they middle class and they middle class? But if I sent you to look for middle class, you look for them where? Lovington, South B, South C. If you were asked to look for middle class, you'd never step in a place called Ayani. Ayani in Kibera. But you're forgetting that actually, there's where these people could be living. If you went to a place like Kampala, where would they? You think the middle class lives in Kololo? There you go. Chivuli, Wandegea. But when we send you there, where will you go? You'll walk straight into Kololo and say this is where they could be living. So, the other belief is the middle class are people who live in comfort. From the description that you, you saw, from the people, the real people who are talking, it is very difficult for you to come back again after interacting with this data and start believing or start creating a case of the middle class that lives in comfort. Yes, there are aspects of the middle class who live very comfortably, and there are aspects of the middle class who are struggling. Middle class don't live in comfort. They live in such quarters. They live in such houses. You might not believe it, but those are the people who could be your middle class. That is where the money could be. Because there must not necessarily be people who are living in a proper house with your proper sitting room and a proper kitchen and all that. No, no built up sinks, nothing. And you can see that 96% of them, yes, have electricity. A, a good percentage of them could be using gas, but also use charcoal to cook. So they are there, and they used some of those things that you can never associate with middle class. Let's continue. There's another thing that we discovered in this survey, and it's very important, that the middle class consumers own a lot of appliances. Or they are people who own things. If you go to those houses that you might not want to believe I exist. A middle class person living in Kawangware, do they have a smartphone? Do they have a plasma TV? Do they have a fridge? Do they have a microwave in that place? Do they watch their movies? And sorry, DSTV, they also watch DSTV Sambaza. And the fact is, the consumption patterns, regardless of where they live. In the session we had earlier today with the CEOs, one of our panelists was very clear and said, you go to some of those places, and you might not believe that this, just back, you, you might not believe that these people are middle class, but you go even to your rural village, if you're coming from, let's say, rural Kwale, rural Lamu, wherever, and you find a child or a boy whose education is not very, 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 up to, I mean, you can't say that this is a very educated person, but he can name for you the lineup of the Manchester United team that will play, what is their current form, what did Mourinho say? He's a man who shaves me, and the way he can describe a football match, you wonder why he's not in coaching. 
and tells you that, yes, there are aspects of this. And this person is not a person who lives in the places you'd expect. This is a person who will spend the money that you cannot believe to make sure he can access that what he believes. They can interact with appliances, uh, appliances very well. These are the people I told you, the new graduates walking in. The first thing they want to buy and own is a PC. Once they have that PC in the house, it's entertainment. It's a music center. It's a, it's a all video center is there and a storage device. That is what you might not be. Oh, that's what the part you could be missing. That could be the middle class you're missing. The other thing that, uh, or the other belief, belief number seven is that, that middle class consumers are traditional or less traditional. The thing is, this is, been a very, very, very controversial thing. But let's understand one thing, that the middle class people come to town and they live in towns. You might not believe it, and because we are Kenyans, we are very traditional. Kenyans love having different homes, regardless of their income. So somebody will have a house in Nairobi and another one in Vihiga, because he comes from Vihiga, so he has two homes. That characteristic of Kenyans is not the norm in Africa because we find out that these people are slightly less traditional. And especially in regions like West Africa, they're not attached to where they come from. Once you've left the village and gotten yourself to Lusaka, you're done. Our neighbors to the south, once you leave wherever you're coming from and you get yourself in Dar es Salaam, you are, a, you are a person from Dar es Salaam. Likewise, once you leave your side of the country in Nigeria and find yourself in Lagos, you never see a Nibo saying, I have to go back to where? To Biafra, Onisha. Once they've moved in Lagos, they're in Lagos. And that is the life that they're going to lead. So the middle class is almost like that. I'm sure if you looked at your average middle class persons, they have very little attachment to what they call their roots or the places they came from. And these are phenomena that we observed clearly across Douala, Lusaka, Dar es Salaam, Lagos, and the places we did the survey. Belief number eight, are the middle class women empowered? That one goes without saying. Yes, our survey proved that these people are very, very empowered. They know about their own investment, but not in the Kenyan style where there's what? An account that the man is never told. <laughs> you only have the joint account, but not our account. The joint account means yours. <laughs> but it's true. The middle class woman is very, very, very what? empowered, apart from in the house of that gentleman who said that his wife belongs where? And then Nigerians told him what? And him he belongs where? In the hospital in London. That was the answer. But again, what is important for me is that you pick up that, that the beliefs of the middle class, the middle class people have good incomes? Yes, they have good incomes. That income might not be there. If I sent an average banker with spreadsheets, they'll never see that money. But they have good incomes. They are well educated. And I'm sure, how many of you here have tertiary education? How many of you know of people who have more than tertiary education? And they're pursuing tertiary education. And you ask them, is this what you're looking for in life? These people in the middle class are consumers and they live in small households, yes, we've seen. And I always ask this question again, how many of us know people we know who have families of seven children, even in my age cohort? Getting people with seven children, yes, you see one or two. Six, when I say two, then I'll start getting all hands up. The other thing, just go back, the other thing we discovered about the middle class is that, and I've, I've said they own houses. No, they don't own houses. They don't own cars. And if they own cars, 
you need to see the number of people who work in Nairobi or the number of people who use matatus in Nairobi. That's when you understand that the middle class does not even own cars. Most of us walk. As, how many vehicles are there in, in Kenya? How many vehicles are registered in Kenya? How many? Now, you might think that you have a lot of vehicles in Kenya. There are about 2 million in a population of about 45 million. So don't, the guy from KRA can confirm for you those numbers. <laughs> so, with the belief of our summaries and the findings, we believe that Kenya, Africa, has a middle class. And there are so many things that define the middle class. The other things that we described in this same study, that what are these things that have contributed to the middle class arising in Africa? And we said there, you have an advantage. Issues like population growth, Africa is growing, the population of Africa is growing. Issues like living in urban cities is a big advantage. The investment in infrastructure, you might not like it, but the truth is investments like the standard gauge railway Investments like uh, the Isiolo Airport, investments like the Olkaria geothermal plant, those are investments that are causing a rise in the middle class somehow. The other bit that is happening in Africa, and we noticed in this study, is that commodities, or things like oil in Turkana, you see that is changing the life of people in Turkana. Most of you marketeers have known one thing for a very long time, that in a place like Meru, the economy is totally different because of one thing, that they have Mira. So even as market researchers, when we go to look for interviewers in Meru, we can't get interviewers because the peanut we give them, they'd rather sit and sleep under a Mira tree, they'll earn more money than that. And it's, it's, even education suffers. The other thing that is happening in Africa that is creating a buzz around the middle class, and we've confirmed that in our study, is the fact that education is also sparring that. You people understand brands. Either your middle class wants to interact with brands. The middle class has some disposable income to spend on brands. And we are seeing them working in different places. So, guys, do we have a middle class? Do we? Is that middle class you and me? Is that middle class you and me? That middle class most likely is not the person sitting next to you. That middle class could be lower than you. And we discovered that that middle class is slightly where that, you heard their voices. What they described, they are not poor. They are not rich. They are not very comfortable. They are different descriptions of this middle class. To interact further with this data, I would ask you to visit us at Ipsos. It's very rich data. It's contained in, uh, a, in, in different formats. A lot of analysis can be done, and we can even drill deeper to tell you what kind of media this middle class is using. We can also tell you the actual number, or what we think is the actual estimate of the middle class. And by the way, we need to change one thing about our thinking, there's something that the Africa Development Bank pushed around the middle class, and they try saying that the middle class is about 350 million people in Africa. No, we don't agree with that. We think from our extrapolation that that should be around 100 million people in Africa. So with those very, very many and many remarks, I'd like to stop that presentation there and re ask you for questions, which I hope uh, I'll be able to respond to. was very insightful, left me with a lot of questions. Let me cut to the chase. <laughs> Can you give me a Kenya shilling figure monthly for the entry level of the middle class? Wouldn't you like to know that? Where does it start? I started by telling you something. Don't attach the middle class, to a dollar figure. And the dollar figure is an amount that I use arbitrarily. I meant don't attach a figure to 
the middle class. I'll give you the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics description. Anyone earning about 23,000 shillings, 23,000 Kenya shillings per month, which is about $230, to a person earning around 199,000 shillings is considered to be middle class. Do you believe that's a middle class person? 23,000 shillings to 199,000. Not at all. Uh, if, if you go further, the American version tells you that anybody with some income, disposable income, not earning, disposable income above $13 per day, which is around $390 in a month, is middle class. That is the lowest level. Is that a person in the middle class, according to you? Definitely not. Yeah. So the thing is, trying to look for the middle class on figures and numbers and cutoff points will not work. We know that there are people who earn that kind of money, but we believe, we believe as they said, that they are hustlers. They are somewhere here. They do a lot of things. In fact, we do, if you, there are more videos that if you watch here, you'll see that they are talking about what they do for a living. I'm sure most of you here, if you're to be honest, you'll say, yes, we have a side hustle somewhere. Is it true? You earn a certain amount of money, and if you come from Kisi, you, send, you sell your chin saga from home that comes through whichever Nyamira Express, you, sell, you have people buying it in Nairobi. If you come from Moranga, you have your makorofia coming from Moranga, and you supply them to what? To people in town. You have people bringing you milk and all that. There are people selling things across here and there. And you've seen, and, and I tell people there, Kenyans are real hustlers. You, the quail business, unakaploti, all that kind of investment, and people are trying to just create the extra amount of shilling. Most of you say the hustle is real. It's really real. So if, if you went and looked at the attach it to some amount, you end up with a figure that is so abstract and if you go to all those portals, because if you, there's a, there's a slide I could show you that shows all those portals trying to describe the middle class, the AFDB, McKinsey saying that we have a, a certain number of, uh, rich, uh, of the middle class in Africa. We, you go to a study by different scholars, the World Bank itself. So you can't put a figure to it. What we say is that there is a characteristic, a people who have a certain character characteristic in their expenditure, they have a certain amount of money, they have a certain level of education, these people tend to consume in a certain way, and these people could be that middle class that we are looking for. Sorry, Agri, uh, that said, yes. early on in the plenary, yes. you mentioned a figure of uh, $19 a day, which is about 2K, yes. Kenya money. Yes. Expound on that one. Okay. When you look at the different levels who could be in the middle class. Then there are people who have some disposable income. When you look at a certain group and a certain category of people, and in this study, we say that there are these people who are, certain, uh, who are at above a certain level of income. These people have some disposable income to this level, and we equated it to about an equivalent of about $290 a month. And so these people could be in that category. And I give an example of a matatu driver. How much does a matatu driver earn? And we could exclude this person. Oh, 500, perhaps 1,000. This person earns 30,000, 2,000 shillings a day. So if this person does his how many squads? In a month, 20, 2,000. This guy is in 40,000. He has his lunch paid for and everything paid for by the matatu. So is this person in the middle class or not? And I'm sure if I sent you out there to look for such a person and I gave you a primary school teacher who earns how much, whether you're in Nairobi or where, a primary school teacher will be earning about 17,000 shillings. So who is the middle class? You'll pick for me the primary school teacher, the middle class person, and leave this other person. What this study is telling you is don't ignore this other person. The actual middle class could be this matatu driver who society has 
try to train you to believe is not what? It's not the middle class. So it's more paid to what this person actually has. I'm Grace from Unilever. I manage the most vibrant brand, Sunlight. The question is, um, from what you have told us, it really shows that we have overestimated our middle class. So what, whoever we thought was in the middle class is actually does not sit in the middle class. The question is, which class are we now? <laughs> That's a very good question. You are slightly more affluent than the middle class. So we'd like to put you in a category we'd call affluent or a very, very comfortable middle class. And, and, and for good reason, guys. For very, very good reason. When, uh, when you talk of the middle class in uh, America, people think or conjure up a picture of a person, and the former president of America, uh, Barack Obama, and when he was here, he spoke about, he said that he is expecting Africa, and he was talking to the Akira Chicks group and all that, those entrepreneurs, that Africa will have a middle class that will rise and will be able to buy iPhones and live in certain neighborhood. Let me ask you, today, sitting here, buying an iPhone, does it put you in the middle class? Madam, can sponsor this iPhone? Oh, ni sponsor. Songo ama ni sponsor wa kawaida. <laughs> sponsor ni sponsor. <laughs> sponsor pia ina classes. Because I tell you, even this thing of, even at that, at the higher level, look at uh, the time, or the way the people at the higher class were investing. There's a point where everybody who thought they had money was investing in a rose farm. That was the hustle of those of that class. And the real hustlers were also investing in quail farming lower here. <laughs> and you know what happened? All of them burnt their fingers. Because the guys at the top were investing in rose farms without understanding where they're going to take these flowers or the, the intricacies of this. They had the money. As guys who can take small cooperative loans and Barclays loans, thought that quail is working, and somebody was smart enough, brought a pyramid scheme called quail farming, and it is, that is it. So I want to say that, yes, you are affluent, you are at another level, and you are at a very, very, you, you, you might not be as affluent as the very, very top guys, but you are affluent. If you took the example of the iPhone I was telling you, very few people in our middle class can buy an iPhone. How many of us can spend a hundred shillings or a thousand dollars on a phone. But we also cannot spend eight thousand on a phone because it's below us. We cannot spend twenty thousand on a phone because that's not be that's below us. So you, you start thinking of a phone at twenty one thousand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now uh, food for thought. Good evening. Good that evening was a great you. presentation. Thank you so much. Um, so we're from Diani Reef, and our question to you is, um, in the current political climate, we're having issues with tourism at the coast. So as a marketeer, what would you suggest that hotels need to do to target this so-called middle class that you've had the opportunity to interact with? I think regardless of the economy, and uh, this is my appeal, of the politics in Kenya, this is my appeal to you Kenyans, you need to think beyond the politics and think about what is in your stomach and what you're going to eat. Food, put food on your table. Some of us feel so bad when you realize that we have lost 10 months talking a lot of nothing. You know what? This is where you start reasoning like the young people and ask yourself, how many times do you live? You only live once. And there's nowhere in your life you're going to revise this year. But on, to answer her question, I think there's that class. We need to think of a package and a product that can suit that class. Because what we think of is affordability. I'll tell you, I'm old enough to have seen 
credit cards come into this part of the world. There was something called diner's card. And you put it on the table, those days you become very relevant, especially to the fairer sex around that table. <laughs> when that thing came, Kenyans thought this is something that cannot work, it has no place here, and it died. But it was something that came at a time that people didn't understand it. It came back. A lot of you now have plastic cards, so many in your, car, in your pockets, and you're using them to buy items. Likewise, hotels like Diane Reef can come back and look at what is it that we can package for our people? What is it that we can target? Or who are these people we can target? When equity came, I saw equity coming. I'm that old. And those days I was a salesman like all marketers start. I saw equity selling items or selling their services to people in the village. Moranga, you go to Moranga, Kanyanyaine, you find equity vans trying to sell their services. And they knew there was a gap. Those were the days when Barclays, for lack of a better word, and they are very good, yeah, they threw other people out and they said they cannot touch certain people. Most of the big banks said, no, 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 if you don't have a certain amount of money, we close your account. And then our dear old post bank also could not cope with this. So the thing is, these people saw a gap, and that gap was not being seen by anybody. And there were people who really craved financial services. Another good example is Chase Bank. They might be having corporate governance problems, but they understood the needs of the people. And if you have people who have banked with Chase Bank, some of you are here, you believe Chase Bank is the best thing that happened in this country after Chapati Zakukaliwa. <laughs> because it's clear that there's a gap for everything. And where, where our brother Watch was working, Kiss, who knew that Kiss would work? We thought that everybody, only radio that could ever work in this country was capital. Kiss happened, and it's history. All you marketeers know that. So there's always that gap, and I would urge you, my sister, that we look at that gap. We can, and we can exploit it. And talk to us market researchers, even if you don't want beefs, we are many here. 